So this is, an, uh, I would say, a fairly newer concept in the last, uh, at least in the last 10 years of management for men with metastatic prostate cancer. There's a whole new group of medicines that have been out, I don't know, not, not that long, that are changing the landscape on what we can do with men that are having advanced prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer, castrate sensitive prostate cancer, castrate resistant prostate cancer, things like of that nature. And what they're doing is they're sh this class of medications are showing to increase survival, which is, which is huge for these guys. And so this real world, world data, and this is kind of like a, a newer term I'm seeing in a lot of these research projects of just kind of say like, okay, this is what's going on in the world. It's just, it's just showing us that what we're doing is right. And we're just going to continue to keep doing it. I mean, that's the basic gist of this. Well, when a guy walks in with these metastatic disease sensitive to hormone therapies, you know, the cornerstone is to put them on the, the, what we call ADT. Those are the medicines that block testosterone. That's been the cornerstone treatment for decades. Now we have these new medicines like enzalutamide, apalutamide, darolutamide that are complementing that first class of medications. And that is what's really showing to be a massive difference knowing that this data, this real world data is showing that apalutamide is, is really succeeding with this. We're hoping that it's going to increase its availability with the insurance companies because that's our world. And so that we can get this medicine more regularly so that we can say like, listen, this is our medication of choice right now. This is what the data is showing. Please allow us to get this for our patients. I think, like I said, is we're, we're just hoping that we can see an opening of coverage so that we can really get these patients the, the treatment of our choice and not be dictated what we want to do for our patients. You know, uh, unfortunately, the insurances will kind of dictate like, well, we will only allow you to use Zytiga uh, and we will never allow, you know, whatever their language is. So as things, you know, progress and as things mature in their research, we're hoping that it's just gonna really increase our ability to get access for these medications. Um, the medicines are pretty well tolerated. Guys are doing okay with them. There's always side effects, but we're, we're just hoping that it's gonna really improve access. I, I'm not sure how that is. You know, what I've learned by talking to colleagues is some people have like their opinions. Like there are people who are like, I like Zytiga with prednisone. That's been my thing. My, my patients tolerate it well. And so they become a little, little tunneled into that approach. Some people are like, oh, apalutamide is for me. My patients are great. I've never seen a side effect. And that's what we, we're going to keep doing. So I think, you know, knowing that there are, are, that there's four of these medications on the market right now, I think it just opens up the opportunity to allow us to help our patients better. The days of bioclutamide or Casidex, they're gone, and we're hoping that we never see them again. And that now that we have these two data points, we're able to just, like I said, continue to give us this, these medications. Apalutamide will be great, you know, as long as there's the tolerability and the patients can handle potential side effects and we just keep going with it. Um, it's a little bit different for some people. If a person comes in with, you know, newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer, in other words, they're, they're castrate sensitive. They've never seen any meds, but they're walking in the door with a PSA of a thousand because 
we're st still seeing these guys. Um, we know that a, a younger man is going to move towards chemotherapy and the data that darolutamide is going to complement the chemotherapy. So I do think of that. When I have a person who's coming in and I am not thinking chemotherapy, I'm thinking that they've got um, oligometastatic disease. In other words, they just have a small amount of foci of METs. Like I just saw someone the other day with this. And I think that radiation uh, is going to be an option for them. Then, then I am going to be thinking apalutamide or enzalutamide. But unfortunately, a lot of it is insurance. You know, I can say what I want, but an insurance carrier is going to say, well, this is what they want. So sometimes my, my language, a lot of times is going to, is going to say, listen, we're going to start you on this class of medications. My staff is going to help figure out who is going to be the best value for you. Cause we don't want you to spend your money on this. We want your insurance to spend their money on this. Um, and, and then we'll make sure that that fits well for you. And sometimes that's just the best I can do.